Good morning, everybody, and welcome to A Different Perspective. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, and sorry about that little technical difficulty. Nice thing about technology, we sometimes have a little bit of hiccups that way, but we have an amazing, amazing media team that, uh, that gets everything back on board. So I'm just going to have a little chat with you before we get started, as people are probably wondering where it went. So first of all, the thing I wanted to do is welcome everybody that's in studio today. We have both the men and women here. And I want to put an invite out to all of you. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're from a different state or if you're from here locally. If you ever want to sit and actually come and visit us on Saturday morning, um, you're more than welcome to come and actually sit here with the, the people that are here. And we're actually in our studio, but we also have a little conference area where we do a lot of our trains and everything here. So both men and women come to get a different perspective while they're here. And you don't have to work here. Yes, the majority of people of here, uh, even today, are the media team. But there's also other people that love to come and hang out with us and see what we stand for and what we do. And I'm, I'm actually inviting you and I welcome you to actually have spend some time with us. Um, because once again, I'm very proud of who we are and what we do and the people that we have around us. So if you have a chance on Saturday morning on a topic that you'd like to, uh, to uh, come listen to, you're more than welcome to come in studio here in Green Bay. Even if you just want to fly in and hang out with us, I promise you, you'll have a wonderful time. So now, on that note, um, let me say this again. I said at the beginning, I am excited to be here. But I'm also scared out of my ever-living mind. <laughs> so, and what I mean by that is this. So people say, Doc, you know, how'd you pick this topic? Once again, I love to not only have topics that I continually deal with um, clinically with all of our doctors across the world, but what happens is it's been a big uh, topic of questions that women will actually email me. Now, it's interesting, and it's women. I actually never get these questions from men. I can honestly tell you. The only time I ever get a question from a man is when he has some sexual dysfunction, all right? But just overall, what happens is this is a very, very intense topic, and it's, it's brought up a lot by women. And, and, and I understand it. So I'm going, to, I'm going to personally ask you, I understand that this can be a quite uh, emotional topic. Heck, I just pulled up some of the quotes and some of the comments that people made when, when our media team... Uh, put out the reminder of everybody to actually that we're going to do this on Saturday. Holy mackerel. The comments were coming in like crazy. And uh, some, uh, some quite interesting comments if you go read it. And I'm sorry if your name's up there, but you put your comment on my Facebook. So I just put it up there. It's, it's okay. And all these comments are great. Um, and let me remind you of that. I am a very strong First Amendment person. I'm never offended by what anybody says. Okay. Uh, good or bad. Uh, I get very nice comments every single day. I get very, um, um, you know, not so nice comments. But the one thing is this, as long as they're not derogatory towards somebody individually, I'm cool with any comment. You can disagree with me. You can actually uh, agree with me. You can actually have a different point of view. You can have, I'm cool with that. Just understand. And that's why I like all these comments. Um, once again, I don't agree with most of them, but the idea is this, but I also thank you I thank you for having the, uh, the um, let's even say guts to put them up there because it's okay. I want people to actually make comments and actually I want to see where people's thought processes are. See, I'm more of a listener. You say, oh, no doc, you're a speaker. That's not really true. I'm more of a listener. I'm, I'm a constant people watcher. I'm a constant, uh, both male and female, watching their behaviors, watching their language, watching their health, watching everything that way. And I observe. And I'm hoping to actually see and bring you some information today that I've been observing for a long period of time. Because as I said, and even there are some comments about this even on, on the, the, the Facebook page, is, you know, sex is a topic that is a very, um, that it's argued about all the time between couples. Okay? That's the part that I want to discuss. Why? Why is it that we actually have more psychologists, more marriage counselors, more people talking about things ever in history, yet it's going in the wrong direction? I mean, we, we talk about that repeatedly when it comes to healthcare, but healthcare is actually also a mental state. And if there's a lot of stress, especially when it comes to a woman, it can be very destructive. And therefore, the, the topic of sex drive repeatedly comes up. And it's sometimes women actually doing this. And I'm hoping to, to calm some of the fears down with women today. And I'm, I'm hoping to actually raise some fears on women too. 
okay? And I'm also here to calm some male fears down, and I'm also to raise some fears up. Because sometimes the only way people change is by fear. I used to say this, people uh, change by either inspiration or desperation. I minorly agree with that now. Most people change in desperation. A small fraction, 0.002% of people may be changed by inspiration. So I'm hoping some of you guys are desperate and that's why you're watching this. I'm hoping right now that your wife grabbed your butt, sat you down and said, you're gonna watch this. Do you saying? Because I've been watching Dr. Flynn's stuff and he makes sense. And even though the people that, for example, that want to disagree with me on this, please give me a chance this whole, pers this whole uh, uh, video to give you a different perspective on this because it's gonna sound funny. I'm gonna give you the perspective from a male. I'm gonna give you the perspective from a female. Why? Because I believe I understand both sides. I understand why there's such a fight. I understand, for example, why this is such a big topic and I'm willing to have the discussion even though, holy mackerel, Man, I got, you see the ones up here. You can go on the Facebook page and all these people came from the Facebook page so they posted on there, but you should have seen the private messages I got. You should have seen some of the emails I got. It would horrify you some of the things that were said to me just by, just by putting up that I'm gonna talk about sex drive. So, that being said, I ask you to give me your attention, both male and female, and let me see if I can give you a different perspective and at the end of this, I encourage you, I encourage you massively in the comments to let me know if you agree with this different perspective or if you disagree. But if you disagree, here's what I ask you. I wanna know why you disagree. See, not just I disagree. See, my book, I Disagree, that's actually all over the world now. Guess what happens? I don't just say I disagree. I went, I disagreed, and then I proved it. Then I proved it scientifically. I proved it from a simple standpoint of communication with it. And that's why we have a different form of healthcare that is now spreading all over the world. So if you do disagree, you're gonna find out that most people just wanna disagree emotionally because they don't wanna accept the reality of what's being told to them. And then they'll get emotional. So if you disagree with the concepts I'm gonna share with you today, share it, but don't just say I disagree. Say, here is why. And it can't be an emotional standpoint. You know what I'm saying? Because if you see on these, there's a, there's a lot of emotional stuff here. You know, it's like, you know, sex is way overrated. Well, Brenda, that's an opinion. Sex is overrated. Maybe to you. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, fine. I'm, and I'm okay with it. I'm okay that she said that. And for, uh, sex is overrated and forced on us from everywhere. I'm 60 and done. People with other opinions walk a mile in my shoes before you judge. Um, okay. Cool, I love your opinion. I do, I actually, I actually thank you for posting that. I'm appreciative that you did that. But I'll bet you, Brenda, by the time that I'm done, what happens, I understand why you posted that. You say, Doc, you don't know me, you've never seen me. No, but I do understand. I get it, I really do. I'm actually compassionate, I'm under, I understand the, the aspect and I can probably, if I had some time with you, understand why. Because there's both physical and mental things that relate to that, I get it. Okay, um, I do love this one. We're gonna talk about this. Uh, Jesus' answer, okay? Love that, I, you guys know from my thing last, last week. Of course, I agree that Jesus is definitely number one. But I know kids that go to, go to uh, church like crazy and their parents are very strict about it and they get, a kid, they get a girl knocked up at 16 years old. I actually know somebody personally. Do you see what I'm saying? See, so I, I get it. So Jesus' answer, cool. I agree with you on that. But we got to have, you wonder why there's such a fight between men and women on this issue. Because there's never two perspectives on this. And, I don't, and I'm going to give you one perspective, but we're talking about male and female. And I'm hoping that you're going to look at what I'm going to present to you. And actually, let, I'm hoping we're in agreement on this. And at the end, I want you to tell me if we're not. Okay? So where do we start? So where do we start? Because all the psychiatrists say this and all the psychologists and all these things. I've read extensively, once again, through the years, but I mean, just even recently, 
um, just because, like I said, I was I got stimulated on this topic for multiple reasons, and then I was reading a, a, a journal on psychology, and then of course, then today psychology put out an article and blah blah blah, and so I said it's about time we talk about this. So now, so what are we looking at when we look at sex drive? You know, what is the major factor? Okay, well, if we look at it from my standpoint to start, and this this is brought up a lot, this is brought up in every major article and in, in, in literature talking about that way, is it has something to do with testosterone. All right? Now, testosterone by nature, guys, is a hormone. What is a hormone? It's a messenger. That's what it is. It's a chemical messenger. Can I say that again? It's a chemical messenger that's made from certain constituents, and it goes and tells body parts what to do. Okay? Now, we know this, and that's why just even when I say testosterone, it's like, yeah, that's a guy's sex drive, and, and yeah, but also a woman's sex drive, and so it has a significant role. But let's see how testosterone is actually defined, all right? And I want you guys to understand this. So here we go. Why do we need testosterone? Once again, in males, it's the key sex hormone. It regulates fertility, muscle mass, fat deposition, red blood cells. It regulates. It's a major growth hormone for a man. Just understand, that's why it's actually classified majorly as a male hormone because it's the most abundant hormone that we have that gives us our growth and development. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. It's the major growth and development hormone for a male. It's essential for him in all of life. It takes him from a little boy to a man. It develops every characteristic about him when it comes to that. It helps grow his, his intestinal tract bigger, helps grow his liver bigger, helps grow his you know, hair, everything, everything. It does everything for him. See, when you look at it from a standpoint of what it does from a biological standpoint, it's a growth hormone, all right? Now, we understand that physically. So there's that physical component, but hold the phone. There's mental components that it does. And that is the basic biology of testosterone. It does what? It, there's more about it. Testosterone is a hormone responsible for development of male sex, sexual characteristics. Hormones are chemical messengers that trigger necessary changes in the body, both physically and mentally. Let me say it again. Physically and mentally. Females also produce testosterone just at smaller amounts. So there is characteristics that are development of females, but just at a smaller amount. So some of the major ones that we look at, obviously, no joke. I just even pulled this from Harvard Medical School, all right? That's the cool thing about it, guys. If you just understand the biochemistry and the, and the anatomy and how the body works, you can really start to put these pieces together, all right? And that's what I want to step back and say for a second. Everything that I ever comment on, everything that I ever do a video on is based on that. And that's why I always give you references. And, I, and if I tell you a, an opinion or assumption, I let you know. But this is basic. You know, when I'm, I'm actually going to go back on the road very shortly, not a lot, but I'm actually going to do some of the hormone connection seminars for two purposes. It's high demand and people need to hear this. It's one of the reasons why I did this video today about sex drive, because this relates to it. A lot of this is actually covered in my hormone connection seminar. But watch this. Testosterone is the major sex hormone in males. Let me say it again. Major, major, major. And you say, Doc, everybody knows that. Yes, but they don't correlate that, ask, that this is a development and growth both physically and mentally because guess what? Yes, his testicles and penis grow. Yes, he gets a deeper voice. Yes, he gets actually facial hairs. Yes, his muscle size strength, bone growth. But there it is. Sexual drive. It's biological. So I love how women say that, guess what? It's, it's a, you know, men can control it. They can control what they do. But that drive, for example, is actually part of his development. And guess what, ladies? It's part of your development. But see, as you understand this, when you look at testosterone itself, it's a growth and development, both physically and psychologically, and sex drive is one of the major things. And that's why, so as a man's development, so as a man's development and sex drive are interconnected. Did I write that wrong? <laughs> so a man's development and sex drive are interconnected. They're connected. There is no separation. Ladies, if you do not like that, please avoid men at all cost. And every woman's like, hold the phone. Yes, at least I'm willing to say this. 
Because if you don't like that, then guess what? Stay away from men. It's true. Now, now hold the phone, ladies. Because I say, I'm going to shut you on my husband to watch this now. He's like, there you go, honey. Hold the phone, guys. We're going to bring this around. Because there's things you have to understand about a woman, too. Okay? So look at this. So a man's development and sex drive are interconnected. It's like this. I have a 16-year-old daughter. And people say to me, Doc, are you going to let her date? Hell no! Are you kidding me? What do you think a 16-year-old boy is like? Well, I trust my kids. You're nuts. You're absolutely ridiculous if you understand the biology. But he loves Jesus. Yes, but uh, guess what? Jesus gave him the sex drive and development, and he's going to chase after my little daughters. It's why I had the discussion with my 13-year-old daughter, uh, who actually, we went on a date. And I said, listen, now that you're 13 and you are developing, and now, for example, that you are entering uh, years of where you will meet young boys, just remember, anything a little young boy says to you, just remember, he's trying to touch your boobs. And I know that may offend some moms and be like, well, that's not my son. Then you have a misconception of what happens when it comes to just the development of the human body. See, that's why I kind of laugh about this. Women portray what they are not inside to men. Vice versa. Now they're trying to be men. And that's biologically impossible. Okay? So this drives me nuts. It's interconnected. It's hugely. They cannot be separated. They cannot. See, now once again, the topic today is sex drive. By dominant, as you understand, you said, Doc, we talk about women. Once again, they don't have as much of a testosterone. Yes, and that's why they don't have much of a sex drive. They cannot be connected. Now, you say, well, Doc, hold the phone. There's women that they actually have more sex drive than men. Yes, they're called men that are sick. Because if their development isn't going right, there can be a significant change in their sex drive and development. But if you look at a man that loses his sex drive, he loses more than his sex drive. It's not a, a linear thing. There's multiple things that happen during this time. Now, what I'm going to do is this, is I'm gonna show you, once again, how easy it is to produce testosterone and why men's desires are, and, and their sex drive is so high. So we're gonna go over to studio here. So Brandon, are we good? Yep. All right, so here we're gonna do. I'm just gonna go through some basic anatomy that, once again, this is basic stuff. You can look this up in the book. And that's why I'm gonna say some things that medical profession is one of the, the medical profession. Let me say this. Your general practitioners, your endocrinologists, your doctors are one of the largest contributors to lowering men's sex drive than anything on the planet. And I'm gonna show you why, okay? So watch this. So all you doctors watching, this is why this, this thought process is not changed. It's why, for example, there's so much sexual dysfunction in men. So let's go here. Number one, if you look at the, the testicles, okay? Now, remember, I'm gonna give you basically general ranges for research at roughly from 94 to 97% of your testosterone is made by your testicles, okay? I've read reports as low as 92 and as high as 98, but let's just say between 94 and 97, just to give a rough estimate. They can argue over a couple percentage. But the vast majority of your testosterone is produced by your, by, for a male, by his testicles. Now, how does it produce it? Well, just, it has to get a message. It has to give a message to produce the messenger, okay? So the message comes from the brain. It comes from a pituitary gland, and it releases a hormone that goes to the testicle, and it's called LH, luteinizing hormone. No joke, I'm teaching all these things because you can go look them up. Now it's kind of funny, because if I want to find testosterone deficiencies, testosterone excesses, I'm going to test all these things. You know what I'm saying? And test all the factors to see how the whole system is messaging to each other. That's what our uniqueness always did. Now watch this. If you have LH stimulation from the brain, luteinizing hormone for the brain, it tells the testicles to produce the majority of our testosterone. Now watch, you only need a couple things. So let me tell you this, here's the funny part. That's why when I see all these testosterone boosting supplements, it's a, such a scam. It's such a scam. Because honestly, if you do this, if you have luteinizing hormone, so LH, now testosterone itself, testosterone, itself is made from a couple things. The backbone is cholesterol. 
Let me tell you that. The backbone for everything for our steroid hormones is cholesterol. Remember when you kind of may have been offended that I said medical doctors are the number one cause of actually testosterone problems? Guys, what's the most, well, Humira just passed it for the first time ever in 50 plus years. What is the most dominant medication males have been on and you've been convinced that this substance is bad for you? Cholesterol. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease. It does not. Let me make that very clear. Dr. Greg, actually watch our past videos. It'll actually give you a great representation, okay? Every steroid hormone, every cell of the body that has any kind of fatty component has some cholesterol. It's essential. So doctors are actually the number one contributor. You lower cholesterol, you lower testosterone. You know, and so that's why when guys come here and say, doc, I have low testosterone. No, you don't. No, you don't. You actually have, you're interfering with its production. If I want to build a house, I need lumber. Well, I don't want to get lumber. Then you're not going to get build a house. See, so that's why people say, doc, I want to raise my cholesterol, but I'm a statin drug. Good luck. It will not happen. That's the bad part, okay? You need cholesterol. You need LH, okay? Guess what? When you look at, for example, let me show you this. You need no damage. Okay, you need no damage. What do I mean by no damage? So here's what happens. You need to make sure that the testicle itself has no damage. Now, I'm gonna throw something out there. This may be a whole nother, a different perspective. That's why it scares me about vasectomies. You know, people don't realize the testicle's not a ball. It's actually a, it's actually a, a ton of actually long tubules that they, tubules that they cut. That's damage. That's why they notice that, for example, a lot of times when guys get vasectomies, it can affect testosterone production, okay? So that's why no damage. And there's certain vitamins and nutrients you need, okay? And that's where a lot of the uh, um, supplement building companies say, this is a testosterone booster, but watch the wording. See, what happens is what they talk about is free testosterone. Once again, a whole other topic. I think I did a, a quick tip video on that, okay? But when you look at testosterone production, you need LH, really, so it makes it a little bigger for you guys to watch at home. You need LH, you need cholesterol, you need some certain vitamins, not much, and guess what? And then no damage to the testicle. It's actually pretty easy. It really is. So if we can give your body the healthy cholesterol, which is kind of funny is this, your body makes over was it 90% of your cholesterol, 80 to 90% of your cholesterol bought through your liver. So you don't really need to even eat it. It's produced mostly. Actually, once again, basic vitamins and minerals and micronutrients and trace minerals help you make it. Don't you know, damage your testicles and get some brain stimulation. Ladies, you have a huge effect on LH production. Wait, you say, ladies, I thought we were talking about guys. No, ladies, you have a huge, uh, uh, um, change uh, a way to actually stimulate the guy's actually production of LH. You know why? Because with a man, not with a woman as much, but a man, LH is very stimulatory, okay? Especially by vision. It's why a man is always looking at your butt. I told you, we're gonna have some conversations today. So if you look at, for example, these things, so as a doc, you say, doc, you know, all these low T clinics, they're just synthetically replacing it. Yeah, and how's that working for us? Not only can that cause a significant amount of problems, but the idea is this, you never found out why it was low. And testosterone is very easy to make. Now there's one thing you say, well, doc, but wait, besides making it, can you get rid of it? Yes, you can. You can take your testosterone and convert it into the estrogens. Do you know how? eating too much sugar. So guess what? Reduce your sugar, make sure you have these good things. Your development in the man is so much simpler. And that's why when a guy fasts, his testosterone goes up because he reduces his cholesterol, his or reduces his uh, sugars, his cholesterol starts to go up, his actually, actually uh, um, testosterone starts to go up, and next thing you know, he has more of a drive just from fasting. Why? Because he's not converting it into estrogens. It's why there's so many estrogen problems. I, talk about, I talked about last week with breast cancer. It's why men are getting breast cancer big time. They're converting their testosterone. So a lot of guys can have normal uh, um, LH, normal cholesterols, do this, no damage, and they're just having too much darn sugar. And I personally believe 
That's the second most uh, fundamental cause, and I can scientifically prove that. That's probably the most second fundamental cause why a guy's testosterone is low. I still believe that uh, statin drugs, because you can't reduce cholesterol levels and expect that to be normal. So now, so think about this though. This whole process happens when a young man's a teenager. Testosterone is a very mentally, sexually driven hormone. That's why your young 13-year-old boy isn't as innocent you want to think he is. I'm talking to you moms. I am. Because you have this fallacy that your boy is a good Christian boy. No, the Christianity is supposed to teach him how to control his desires. If you think that he doesn't have them, you're living in a fantasy world. Now, I'm talking to you from a person of faith, but you don't even have to be a person of faith. I just love how people make excuses about what, what is why it happens, and then we push this into the reality and go, I can't understand why he did that. You know, some is this. People say, well, why won't you let your daughter go on a date? Because I'm not going to put my daughter in an environment to actually, actually, and my, and my daughters are beautiful. And they're going to be looking at them, what things are going to have their testosterone. Do we not get this? I, it just drives me nuts. I trust my son. You're, you're a psycho. I trust my daughter. Well, she may not have the sex drive as a male, which I'm going to teach you, but then you put her in, in, in the hands of someone that does. And then, we're saying, then we say men are pigs. Hey, guess what? If, if there's a bunch of bad food here and that's all I can eat, it's the environment. I say get, I'd rather have the food taken out of here so I don't have any desire to do it, to eat it. See, we have to have those conversations. Stop letting your darn kids go out on individual dates. Well, that's your personal opinion. I, I, okay, how are we doing? Have you taught and sat down your young man? You think I'm joking? You ask my daughter. I actually had a conversation, once again, with her prom date. And I've known this boy since he was born. And I said, and I said listen, I'm a man. You're, you're, you're a man. Okay, because he was 15 and he already starting to develop. And a good man. His actually, get this, his mom is actually a wonderful person. Dad, he's kind of psycho. But anyways, his mom is a good person. And so, but I knew that his dad didn't sit him down and talk about it. So I said, listen, I'll make it very clear to you. I understand that you have sexual desires. And he looked at me. He didn't shake his head no and stuff like that. But I said, listen, if you try to perform one of those daughters, you won't make it to 16. You understand? And I said, and as long as I know that you can control them, and they're wrong. So my daughter and a bunch of couples went to their homecoming to prom and stuff like that. Okay? But I also had a conversation. Wait, you're talking to somebody else's son? Yes! Because I understand him. I understand Uriah. I understand Brandon. I understand all the guys. So have that conversation. Look at your man. He's not going to deny what I'm saying right now. The only way he will did not, did not have this drive is if he's sick. Because his testosterone lowers, yes, you're right, he has no even drive for you and you could be beautiful. I know it's a different conversation. I'm not going to set my daughters up to lose. I'm not going to set them up. I'm going to scare the hell out of any boy, young man, to let him know, I understand you. And, if you, and guess what? And I even teach my girls. I even teach my girls. My drive for my wife is extremely high. And that's okay. I will literally touch my wife's butt when, she, when, when the girls were all, and the, girl, the little girls all giggle and stuff like that. And guess what happens? I say, and that's okay, because that's my wife. You say, and it's wanted touch, it's not unwanted touch. But see, but that's okay. Why can't we have the conversations with these young men, these, these 20, you know, these 30 year olds, even the 40 and 50 year olds? Just understand, this is how it works. Now ladies, if you understand how this works, it can work to your advantage. I'm gonna show you how. Okay, so let's go back here. All right. So once again, to separate sex drive from a man's development is, a, is a, actually a misleading thing. Okay, so and once again, and I guarantee any psychiatrist, any psychologist, any endocrinologist, anything that's watching us right now will not disagree with me because it's basic biochemistry and basic uh, development of a male, okay? And I want, and ladies, if you understand that, this allows you choice. Just like it allows me to choose to let my daughters go out on a date, it allows to choose but the environment of being with a man or not. Because you may not like this, and it's really funny. I know really good women 
that actually that do not like this and they stay single. And they're not complaining. They're actually not complaining. I think we live in a culture society that says everybody has to get married. That's gonna, it's gonna surprise the people that I go to church with. I don't think everybody should get married. I think the reason why there's so many fights is because number one, there's no understanding, but even if they now do understand it, they may not want to live with it. And that's okay. I don't have a problem with that. I don't. I have no problem with the woman that says, I don't want to deal with a man like that. I respect you. I honor your decision. And if everybody tells you that then you're going to need a man, and I know a bunch of people are going to say, well, we're not supposed to be alone. I would rather be alone. How are we doing? Divorce rates well over 60%. So I'd rather say people don't go through that. It's devastating for both men and women and children. Okay? So it's, it's funny because I'm going to take a little opinion and a and little uh, uh, side note here. I never in my wildest thoughts, dreams, things that I would be asked to speak at churches and, and marriage conferences and, and, and just events that way, just from my understanding of the human body and how it works. Okay? No joke. Pastors love what I have to say. They're like, you have a missing piece. I'm like, I don't have a missing piece. I just understood and said, listen, you can fight this all you want, but you're fighting the way the creation was made. Okay? Now, you're saying, well, Doc, hold the phone because men, no, 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 listen. Sexual drive and actually having sex is two different things. But see, what happens is, ladies, if your man is not continuously chasing you on a regular basis, he is either physically sick or he's chasing somebody else. I want to pause and let that sink in. Because when women go, my husband has no sex drive for me, I'm going, all right, is he sick? No. Well, you might not know that truly because you don't know his testosterone levels and stuff like that. But guess what happens? But then all of a sudden, there's only a couple of reasons. Because this is biology. And nobody disagrees with the biology I was taught. With the exception of one thing. And let me make this clear. The concept of testosterone dropping dramatically, the stats say roughly after 40 years old, it drops 1.7 to 2% every single year. No, it doesn't. That's a misnomer. You've been guided by the wrong doctors for so long that testosterone normally drops, but do not confuse common with normal. Because it's common. It's not normal. They say it normally drops. That's not true. It's common. Don't confuse that with normal. But it doesn't. It can stay continuously. I can show you guys in their 80s that we have tested that have testosterone levels that they would consider teenage levels. They're not taking anything either. They just know how to work it. They just know how to keep it normal. That's the big difference. So now, I had a light bulb moment. I had a light bulb moment. That's when I start to really understand me as a male, how my body works, all the biochemistry, all the physiology. I was like, oh my goodness, here we go. If you think about it, this happens with women, just at a much lesser of a degree. So doc, are you saying that women have a sex drive? Yes, I do just at a much less of a degree. Ladies, look at me, pay attention to me. Men, if you are looking, if you are watching this, please pay attention to this statement. If you expect your wife to have a sexual drive like you, you are going to make her feel extremely guilty and you're going to make her be something biologically she's not created to be. See. I actually have men. I don't want to call them men. I actually have boys, because only a boy would act like this, that say, I have needs. No, you have a drive. I have needs. And one of the biggest arguments that, that men do, and it's worse with men that provide for their women. Want me to say it again? It's worse. I've sat in a room with couples, and a guy says to me, it's a, desire, it's a need, and what happens is I work hard all day, and I just, and I deserve it. Oh, what freaking fantasy world are you living in? And I even asked him, you know, how much do you want it? He's like, minimally every other day. I'm going, okay, I understand your sex drive, sir, but that's not her. And she's feeling guilty as a wife and her cortisol, and she's stressed out because you provide and she can't leave because you make all the money, otherwise she'd dump your ass. 
I know, trust me. I never thought I was gonna be talking about this with patients in the room when I started 21 years ago. Oh, I was like, hold the phone. And I get pissed. I was mad at this guy going, I understand you have a drive. I'm cool that your that you're testosterone is this, but she's not you. She's not you. If you're with your wife right now, do me a favor. You look her right in the eyes and I'm gonna pause and take a drink. And you look at her and say, honey, I finally understand that you're not me. That right there could change the direction of your relationship. From not only your health, sir, but also from hers. See, it's dramatically different. Yes, I'm gonna show you biologically um, timing. One of the reasons why people always say, Doc, you know your wife's um, um, female cycle because you just don't want to get her pregnant during her ovulation times. No, I talk about that and I know that. So, I, so we actually have all planned pregnancies. I actually have more of a desire, a sexual desire to know my wife's cycle when I know it's going to be the best time that she's going to have a sex drive. So let me ask you a question, husbands. Have you ever learned when a woman's biochemistry actually has the best chance for them to have a sex drive? No, you have not. Nobody teaches people this. To me, this is all second nature and I put in the practice and I put in the practice in wellness ways all over the world, but then what happens is this, I started to go out and teach it and it was like, boom. It, you wonder why the Hormone Talk got so popular. If you not, have not been there, I'm gonna be in the Nashville area coming up in October. I'm gonna be doing a couple of them, not many, okay? But that's why I want to talk about this on a different perspective. So let's do this. Let's take a look and I'm gonna kind of show you, okay? So the question should always be the role of testosterone in women, okay? And you're gonna notice, once again, I love this. I love how they talk about this. Testosterone, which is primarily thought as a male hormone, is also made and, and, and is important to a woman. Once again, although known as a male hormone, testosterone is also important to women's sexual health. They keep on talking about it over and over again. See, by far it dominates in males, so males will, until we are all wiped off the planet by robots. Guess what happens? Men will always have more sexual drive than women. Now, I hear some of you guys and your women talking about this right now but, uh, under your breath or actually with another person. No, Doc, I have more sexual drive than my husband. Number one, he's either sick, or number two, you're in menopause, or number three, you're sick. Because if testosterone is dominant in your physiology body, you will develop more male sexual characteristics like mustaches, like PCOS, like other testosterone-based illnesses that are elevated, and yes, women, you can have a sex drive all day long, every single day, even through menstruation. But you're sick, and you're gonna end up with some bad things. Bad things, because your body is not meant to, it's still a predominantly dominant, actually, male hormone. And you're right, look at this. In women, guess what? Fertility, sexual drive, menstruation, tissue, and bone, right? It, it's a growth hormone. It is, it's a growth hormone even for you, but it's also a mental sexual hormone for you. It's just even, look at the values. Your values on blood work or on urine work or even on slide work are dramatically lower than the guys. That's why no matter how much a woman works out, unless she is doing something synthetically, she can never even consume the mass, muscle mass of a guy itself. It's why women are not supposed to look like guys. And if they do, it's a bad day. And what I mean by that, internally, it's a bad day. No joke. You wanna see women actually have more of a sex drive? Get them to work out intensely. Because both men and women, when they work out, increase testosterone. That's why, for example, women that work out like crazy, guess what happens? Their sex drive goes up. Sad part is they end up with PCOS and other hormone problems. It's not meant to be that way. And unless you understand the biology of the body, we're sitting there fighting against it. And you wonder why we're so sick and having discussions and having fights about actually sex. So let's do this. Let's, so here, watch this. So a woman's development and sex drive are interconnected also. Just at a much smaller degree. Just at a much smaller degree. Now you say, ladies, but I have absolutely zero sex drive. So I had a Packer player one time, 
And if I said his name, you guys would all know who he was. He came to me because his wife was sick. And we're talking a girl in her 20s, okay? And he said, listen, doc, I will give you all of my contract if you could just get my wife to have a sex drive one day out of, out of the month. One day. My heart broke for him, but also broke for her. Because, no, no joke, he was compassionate and understanding. He understand there's something wrong. That's why he brought her into the office because he was actually talking to another guy, a pack player that we helped his wife that was really sick. And then he said, oh, well, maybe help my wife. How do you think the wellness way grew all over the world? The results. So she came in, guess what happened? Her sex drive started to go back to normal. He didn't give me his full salary, but he did pay his bill, okay? <laughs> so thank you. He still does not live here. He's been retired for a couple years now. He does not live here, but him and his wife still refer buttloads of patients all over the country. Because why? because his beautiful wife went back to have the desire that she was supposed to have, the sex drive that she was supposed to have, okay? So now, so what happens? Is there some biology behind it? Yes, here's some menstrual cycle, there's progesterone, there's estrogen, but then there's that red line testosterone, and what we're going to do is this, we're gonna sneak over to the studio again, okay? So let's do this. So here's what happens. When it comes to testosterone, from the brain, it's kind of the same thing. But a woman's LH is not stimulated the way a guy's is. You don't sit women look around all over going, man, that guy has a nice butt. Doesn't work that way. Their LH isn't that stimulatory. I'll show you the effect of actually what happens when they actually, how to get their, their LH up. But it's not like a guy's. So that's the thing. Men and women are so biochemically different. So if we just take a chart here, let's draw it out. So day one, roughly, so let's say day one, day seven, day 14, uh, day 21, and day 28, okay? So day one, roughly through day seven, so five to seven days, okay? This is the first, this is when the, a woman has her period. Don't call the cycle, guys, let me explain this. The cycle is something that happens roughly 28 to 30 days, 32 days, it doesn't matter. You can menstruate from 26 to 32, it's normal, okay? And it can fluctuate a little bit, day or two there. But the idea is the cycle is the whole, let's say, 28 days. The period or menstruation, when a woman actually bleeds, I'm sorry guys, gotta talk about it. Menstruation, actually roughly is from five to seven days. I had a woman that I talked to yesterday, thank you, Lisa, that got her to talk to me. I don't take any new patients, but I will lead people in the right way and she's gonna go see Dr. Brooklyn down in our Chicago office. But what happens is this. She's like, Doc, uh, my, my mom's got breast cancer. I started to go and talk to her about stuff. She made some connections. She goes, Doc, I only menstruate three days. I said, that's not normal. That's not normal. It's not meant to be that way. You actually are gonna be hormonally deficient. But that first days, once again, the hormones, day seven through 14, 20, that whole cycle, there's certain things that happen during then, okay? And now watch this. With testosterone, once again, at the first part during menstruation, it's bottomed out. It's bottomed out. It starts to raise a little bit more, not terribly a lot. It fluctuates, it gets a little bit, and then it, it kind of spikes, has a nice little spike around the mid, around mid, okay? It's kind of cool. So look at this, kind of low during here. Starting to build up in the second half. Gets kind of a spike right here. You know why? Because LH spikes for other hormones to actually create ovulation. Imagine that. I wonder who created this. I'm being facetious when I say that. I wonder who created this, that a woman starts to get sex drive the same time her egg is released. Imagine that. I wonder if that came because we evolved from, you know, the promoter of super ocean or if this was by intelligent design, okay? Now, here's the cool thing is this. Then what happens is it drops off and it kind of goes a little up and down, drops off and then gets a little spike and then drops. Then adds it back here. So look at this. There are certain times, so ladies, in that day, you know, right around eight to 14, guess what happens? You get a little bit more of a drive. During the 24, you can have a little bit more, but not as much, but you have a little bit more, and then you get that last week, 24, 25, and just being in general, remember, I'm speaking in general, how the body works that way, and uh, that there would be a little bit more. So if you really think about this, ladies, I'm gonna tell you something true. 
there's only really a certain stages, really out of a couple weeks out of the month, that you actually have a sex drive. Sex drive. Okay? That's dramatically different than the man you're sitting next to right now. And that's okay. That's okay. That's what's supposed to happen. That's what's supposed to happen. Don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. Don't let any woman, guy, or psychologist or say, tell that you have to be sexual like a man. It's biologically impossible for you. It doesn't exist. And all it's doing is creating very confused women. Very confused women. Very, very uh, emotionally feels like they can't compete with other women that go out there and act like they're sexual beings. It's a false persona. And I'll call bullshit all day long on women that do that. Now, I understand if they're sick. If their testosterone levels are elevated, if their testosterone levels are elevated, no joke. Guess what? Then that woman can have a sex drive all the time. But you know what she's going to end up with eventually? Cancer. Cancer. Because she'll end up with some PCOS, some fibroids, some other things that way. And without proper care, guess what happened? It's going to continue to develop. That's why cancers are so dominant in women today. Because of hormonal problems. We talked about breast cancer last week. So this whole idea of women bragging about that they have a sex drive all the time. I have massive sex drive during my menstrual cycles. I'm going, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you kidding me? I understand you may have a happy husband. I've actually had conversations with husbands on this. That women that came with PCOS and other problems. And I know some of you women that watching, PCOS, that watching that may have PCOS, you may have no sex drive, no doubt. Because it's been going on for a while. Okay, and then it'll eventually drop. At the end of the day, when women get really sick, everything drops. It goes AWOL. That's why women that have no sex drive, I get it. I do. I really do. Okay? Now, what happens is this, though, is as these things are going about that way, this can be reversed. And now these, these women that actually have that all the time that way, if it's not dealt with, it turns into other things because that testosterone is a growth hormone, not just a sexual desire hormone. It has effects on all tissues, not just mentally. Why are not doctors teach it? Because they have no perspective on this. They don't. I've always said I have a different perspective on everything. Okay? Brandon, let's go back here. Okay. Oh. So now, so let's understand this. And this is a big one. This is my own personal opinion, but I believe this is all scientific. Here's what happens. Do not confuse sexual drive with sexual desire. See, you say, because here's what happens. So let me recap everything. Guys, it's okay for you to have a sex drive every day. That's normal. It's okay. That's what's supposed to happen. Love it. Accept it. Know that's the way God created you. Be happy about it. Sex drive. That doesn't mean you get sex every day. You know what I'm saying? It does not mean you get sex every day. Let me make that very clear. Okay? It means that you will have that drive every day. Women, once again, biologically, there's only certain times of the month that you actually will have a sex drive. A sex drive. And that's okay, ladies. That's who you are. Accept it, love it. Men appreciate that in them, just like women appreciate on this. But now there's some time for negotiation. This is where I believe I've helped a ton of couples all over the world, and this is why I believe the hormone seminar really gets to understand. But don't confuse sexual drive with sexual desire. Because here's what happens. Your wife may only have sexual drive biologically where she wants something a couple times out of the month, several to several weeks during the month that way. But here's what happens, guys. Just like you can be stimulated even more, so can they. And that's where sexual desire is actually a mental aspect to women. And that's why you always hear this. Doc, men have to set the mood. What is the mood? The mood is a mental thing for a woman, which now is a biochemical process that sets them up to now even get drive, sexual desire, and com sexual comfort. Okay? So you can stimulate this in a woman. See, guys, we can be stimulated too. You say, Doc, guys actually by nature have testosterone because they're growing, they do stuff all the time, and so they're going to naturally have sex drive. But man, if, but, but you know something, honey? You know, get this. Watch this, ladies. No, no joke. I have a sex drive. So is your eyes. So is Brant. So all these guys sitting in here. 
guess what happens? And Uriah's with his wife here today. Okay, I know Uriah has a great sex drive. But you know all, all Aaron has to do to drive um, Uriah nuts? Just bend over and grab something out of the dishwasher. Yeah, right, Uriah's like, give me a thumbs up. He already has the drive, but now he's even more stimulated. And our drive is like, we want to attack. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's okay. Okay? Now, the, the, the desire is increased on your ad. Now, I didn't say he could attack, though. I'm not giving guys permission just because they have the drive and desire to touch her. Let me make that clear. Let me make that clear. Guys, just because you, just because you have the drive and desire does not give you the right to touch any woman, period. Let me say that again. Just because you have drive and desire does not give you a right to touch a woman. See, and that's the confusion with feminism and disgusting men. I don't even want to call those people men because that's not what a real man does. A real man understands his drive and desire and now realizes his wife, that beautiful person that's in his life, only has a sexual drive during certain times and he should do everything he can to actually make sure that that environment is there for her to succeed in that environment. And then on those off times, you say, Doc, but wait, you can have sex as long as not menstruating all three weeks during a month. Sure, but it's based all on desire and there's a mental chemical that helps a woman do it. And guess what it is? Serotonin and dopamine, but majorly serotonin. It's our happy hormone. Guys, watch this. What is the highest serotonin-based food on the planet? Chocolate! By far, there's more serotonin in it than any food. It's why women equate chocolate with sex. Men don't. We don't create chocolate with sex. We, we correlate buying chocolate to get sex. Do you see what I'm saying? So here's what happens. Once you realize that a woman can have a sexual desire and you can stimulate guys, it's your job. It's your job to do what? to do everything you can to raise a woman's serotonin levels, to actually put them in the comfort and the desire that it happens. And if she gives you the okay, then you can unleash your drive and desire with that beautiful person. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not that difficult to understand, but it takes two. And guys, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, I believe that if a man really understands this about a woman, he will view that beautiful woman sitting across from him so differently that it's his responsibility because he has a sexual desire, because he has a sexual drive that way, to say, I am going to do that. I'm going to do everything I can to create the environment for my wife to feel that she even wants to do this without guilt, without shame, but increasing her desire. See, I don't know about you guys, you saying, but... If that woman doesn't have a desire, what's it like? I mean that sincerely. I looked at the guy that was, was saying this about his wife sitting in front of me, and I, I looked at him and said, dude, I did this, I said, dude, how engaged is she in it? Well, she's not engaged, and he's yelling at her. And I'm like, dude, are you kidding me? You're stressing her out. You're making her cortisol levels go up. You're making her serotonin levels go down. And then you're demanding something. That's not what a real man does. It's not. If that's your husband he's watching, you're not a real man. Oh, wait, we can't, uh, we can't offend anybody anymore. We can't look at guys and say, you're a piece of crap and you're doing this stuff to women. Vice versa. Or women, you're talking to men the wrong way. Knock it off. These fights continually go on. It doesn't go on in my house. It doesn't. You think I'm joking? Ask my wife. Ask my wife. Ask, ask the people around here that we teach our young couples and stuff this way. Because once again, we understand how the biochemistry and the physiology works. And guess what happens? And yes, if everything works normal, this way it should be. And if a woman or a guy is sick, there's understanding and compassion that what happens during the time. Regardless if uh, there's a high sex drive. Guys, you may have wonderful testosterone levels because it's so much less to affect your levels. But women are affected negatively in so many ways. And I've decided a long time ago that I was gonna preach that everywhere all over the world. And the message resonates to why our book and everything we do actually spreads like wildfire because I'm sick and tired of all these people going, 
Sex and money are our big fight, and here's why, and here's why. No, they're not. If you knew why, then there would be change the minute you give them advice. The advice that I set up and started to teach all over the world is changing marriages, is changing men, is changing women, and it's easy repeatable. And the only criticism that I get is my background. My background. Do you see what I am? But guess what happens? You're trying to argue like I want to be in a medical background. They're the number one cause of why testosterone is low. I don't play that game. The wellness way is a whole new game in a whole new world. Thank you, God, for giving us that idea. And that's what's happening. So watch this. So let's look at this. So sex drive, factors that affect males. Number one, testosterone levels. We know that. You don't have good testosterone levels, your sex drive is going to go down. I understand that. Ladies, if your husband does not have a continuous sex drive, regardless of his age, get him tested. Get him tested. Number two, LH production. Get that tested. Do you understand? These are the factors. Number three, cholesterol. If your doctor tells you to take a statin drug, he is clueless about the human body. It's time to stop it. I used to be nice and say, here's what cholesterol does. No, stop listening to idiot doctors about cholesterol. If it's heart disease, why is it we taking it more and we have heart disease more and more every year, more deaths? It's not that. They have not slowed down anything. Fourth, visual stimulus. Ladies, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, since I'm a kind of jacked up today, I'm going to say the most offensive thing in the world. And Nancy and all the media team and brands like, holy hell. Here we go. I totally disagree with this. I think it's actually abuse in my, my view. This is my view. But I understand burkas. I want to put my daughters in burkas going to school. I really do. I totally disagree with the whole bull crap of that stuff to women and stuff like that. But I get it. What I mean by I get it is, once again, lay, uh, men, be very protective of your eyes. Save them for that beautiful woman of yours. Do not be staring at other women. Please, I beg of you. Yes, visual to us is very important. But I'm asking you, man to man, save those eyes for that beautiful bride that you have. Let your desires be upon her. Because when you start staring at other women, guess what happens? You can get stimulated and your drive can go right towards them. Please do not do that. So as I'm making a stupid comment of I understand burkas, I get it. Women today, not a joke, I am kid you not. So I went to a eighth grade volleyball game last time my daughter, okay, at a Christian school. And the things that these parents let their eighth grade, seventh grade old daughters wear, I looked at my wife, I said, they should be ashamed of how they let their, their kids dress. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm not joking. The development of young ladies because of all the hormone problems are happening more and more, okay? And it's ridiculous. Ladies, you don't need to show everything and you wonder why. Well, guys can control themselves. They can control themselves. They can, I'm asking guys to do it. But what I'm saying is this, you can actually create problems in other people's stuff by what you do. But I'm gonna ask you this, guys, be very careful about what you look at. Do you say I am? I have no problem if you tell me that once again, that you love your wife's butt. I get it. I love my wife's butt. I'm gonna stare at it all day long. I want her to wear tight jeans around the home. I want her to wear as little as possible in my household. Do you say I am? I do. Okay? And you know, she's absolutely gorgeous. I, she is mentally appealing to me. I have huge desire for her. But I save my eyes for her. Okay? And they're wrong. It doesn't mean that I don't see other beautiful women. Don't get me wrong on that. I'm not going to act like I just am this perfect guy. It does not work that way. But ladies, be, be easy on us this way. I mean, I know you might have big boobs, but we don't need to see the crack of your boobs. And, and all you guys aren't going to disagree. Women are like, you're right. And you women that have boobs that do it, your friend, I said this. You know what I'm saying? But you know something is this? It's fine. But this is what I'm talking about, okay? Because once again, it's important to understand. Dopamine levels, once again, brain chemistry. Sugar intake. Guys, once again, reduce that sugar intake. Soy, very estrogenic, very bad for men. Stop eating that. Pituitary tumor. 
You can actually do, a, I've done this before. I've had guys that had no sexual desire and actually all of a sudden, guess what? They, I'm like, ah, these levels don't really make sense. Ran a PTH and it can show a pituitary scarring, aka a pituitary adenoma tumor that actually um, can actually inhibit LH production. And then there needs to be things done that way. So these are things that, factors that can very affect a male. But let's do this. There's also factors that affect females. There you go, testosterone levels. Yes, we test women all the time and they're tanked out. So ladies, I do understand why you have no sexual drive. I do. You guys get low levels just like guys do. It happens in both sexes. Number two, LH production. No joke. Cholesterol, serotonin, dopamine, stress. Ladies, this is a big connector. I know you see, see me repeat it all the time, but when you have stress, you take hormones away from testosterone production. You take your cholesterol levels, you take your, DA, um, your pregnant loan, and it goes towards stress hormones, and now you can't produce your cholesterol, or see your testosterone levels. So please, see, guys are not affected this way. Guys are not. Guys' testosterone levels are not affected by stress. That's why we can have a lot of stress and still have sexual desire, still have sexual drive. It doesn't work that way with women. Their drive and their sexual desire goes down dramatically when they have stress. So guys, what am I teaching you? Don't stress them out. Don't. You're actually, when you stress out a woman, you're actually working against what you biologically want to happen. When I realize that as a man, I'm like, I'm never stressing my wife out again. I'm not joking. I've said this repeatedly. Becoming a doc and figuring this out has made me a better friend, has made me a better husband, has made me a better doctor, has made me a better leader, has made me a better boss, has made me a better everything because I understand how this works. I can't get the best work out of the females and my company dominates in females. My CEOs are females. I can't get the best work out of the ladies that actually run this companies and stuff like that if I stress them out. That's how important it is. See, my message is much more than health. My message affects all areas of life from work to sex life to relationships, everything that way. And you tell me, you tell me who else has put this together and I'm proud that I did that. I'm very proud. There's things that I figured out I'm very proud of that way because I thought differently, I had a different perspective on this. What else? Chocolate, pituitary humor, humor, did I say humor? Pituitary tumor. But last but not least, and I'm gonna have a little soapbox on this, men's behavior, both strong and compassionate. Men, do not apologize for being a strong-willed, sexual, desired, sexual-driven man. Do not apologize to any feminist. Do not apologize to any woman. Do not apologize to anybody. Be very, very proud of the way that you were created and what's meant to do. And by knowing that, there's an aspect of control. There's an aspect of understanding. There's an aspect of compassion to understand that women are not you. Vice versa, women. You understand that this is a man. When you speak down to a man, when you speak to him, not like a man, but like a child, there will be another woman that will stimulate his thought. And you'll be alone because he will take his sexual desire somewhere else. You wonder why there's fights about money and sex, but here's what happens. Guys, I personally believe this, and I'm gonna get some nasty emails from this, but guess what happens? I believe the reason why there's so much problems in a marriage when it comes to sex, it's not because of women. It's because of men's behavior. I believe, for example, that if a man stands up and lets a woman know who he is and then does the things he needs to do, create an environment that not only, for example, at, that woman actually feels loved, she feels understood, she feels you're, you're compassionate with her, that, for example, that you remove the stress from being just being a woman alone, and that, for example, that you create the environment that her not only sex drive can be there, but her sexual desire for you will be there. Let me give you a real life example, and my wife can confirm this. Guys, I have great testosterone. I'm not embarrassed, but I have a huge sex drive, and I'm 45 years old. I think I have more sex drive now because I understand it's never in my life. But guess what? My wife's not me, okay? And there'll be even times that I'm doing all the things to set the environment up. I'll do everything, well, talk to my wife, do everything, do everything romantic to her, do everything that way in that desire to create the desire and environment for her to be able to actually be willing enough to have sex with me. 
this happens. So all of a sudden I can remember going home and my wife had some stress that wasn't caused by me, but I could tell because I understand her. I understand that even if she has a desire or drive, stress can totally affect it. So I was listening to her that night and as we were discussing and having conversations, even though we even talked about having sex that night and I was doing all this stuff and I was setting everything that way, and my drive was like, and if you know you're gonna have sex, guys, you are even more jacked up, okay? But you want something? Listening to her words and being beyond my own desires and drive, I realized she had a bad day. She had a bad day. And even though she would have willingly given her body to me, I didn't say anything. I sat there on the couch. I said, hey, would you like to watch a movie with me? And I purposely did that because I knew the movie would go over the time where she would get tired and I'd tell her that's time to go to bed. And she went to bed. And guess what happens? Yes. Did I feel like I was going to explode? Yes. Okay. <laughs> but what I did was this. She went to bed. And I woke up. And she woke up the next morning. This has happened many a times. And she goes, hey, I thought we were going to have sex last night. I said, honey, guess what happens? It's something on your mind. I plan on being married to you the rest of my life. And therefore, guess what? If it happens tonight, if it happens tomorrow, I'm hoping I can create the environment for you that you want to give yourself to me and stuff like that. But you had something going on. And I want your desire to be there so we can both enjoy it. So I will tell you right now, and guess what? She actually meant a lot to her. Because yes, guys, you will have a sexual drive every day. It doesn't mean you have the right to her. But understand, women, that we are that way. But I believe if we can get to men and talk to them and let them know from little on to when they hit puberty that this is okay, that you need to control your desires, you need to control your drive, you need to do these things, that I believe that there would be no more fights when it came to sex in relationship. I believe there'd be no more that this would actually be a problem in relationships. And I'm gonna continue to go out and preach this. And I'm gonna continue out and share these ideas. But the cool thing is this, at least I have biochemical, anatomy, evidence, and anecdotal watching couples be happier and healthier than ever before because I gave them that different perspective. So, as I told you guys, which I love ending on, we need to stop listening. We need to start learning. I hope that in the, in the, in the comments below that you say, I agree. And if you disagree, besides the motion, please tell me why. Because I believe if we continue the way we are, the divorce rate, the hormonal health, the fights will continue but I believe this perspective could change the world. God bless all you guys. Thank you so much for watching me this Saturday morning. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Also, share this video with a friend. Once again, thank you for watching.